following is an installation demonstration for joint master compression seals. Tools required are a hot plate which will be used to create watertight seals and transitions in the foam. Adjust the heat setting of the plate to medium high heat. You will also need a miter box affixed to a cutting surface. The miter box assures that you will be cutting straight lines to create transitions and seams in the compression seal. To cut the compression seal, use a saw that has been ground down to remove the teeth but still maintains a sharp blade. Pro tip, applying denatured alcohol to the blade and the foam will allow for a much smoother cut. Have work rags on hand for cleanup throughout the installation. Before starting the installation process, it is crucial to inspect the joint. You should inspect the full length and width of the joint. In particular, pay attention to the joint face and throat to ensure that it is flush and plumb and there are no form marks or voids within the concrete. These images that you see here are not in acceptable condition and require remediation prior to installation. Work with your GC to ensure corrections. Poor joint conditions result in 90% of all product failures. Once joint conditions are approved, apply a covering such as duct tape and craft paper to the surrounding deck and joint face before moving forward. When creating a heat welded transition and or seam, you will begin by creating a clean cut in the foam. We recommend the use of a smooth blade saw when cutting through the foam. You can see here that we have ground the teeth off to create the smooth but still sharp edge. Once you have the clean cut, move from the miter box to the hot plate. It is important to heat the seal for 30 to 45 seconds for maximum adhesion. Any longer and you will change the chemical makeup of the compression seal, which will hinder seam adhesion and water tightness. Look for the edges of the seal to curl up near the hot plate. Then quickly place the melted edges together and firmly press along each side to create a tight seam. You will have a few seconds to move the seal and make any slight modifications, but then, once the seal has cooled, it will regain its watertight properties. Now, demonstrating a 90 degree turn. Use your miter box to create the 45 degree opposite angle cuts. Again, heat the seal for 30 to 45 seconds for maximum adhesion. Try to apply equal pressure along the entire face of the compression seal. When you have a properly executed heat weld, you will be able to apply a strong force to the seam without any tearing or breaking. It is time to mix your epoxy. Typically this comes in two containers, an A and a B. The entire can of B is mixed into can A. We recommend the use of a masonry bit to mix the epoxy. Standard paint paddles are not as efficient. When properly mixed, the epoxy will be a light gray color. After you have created your transitions and seams and mixed the epoxy, it is time to start the installation process. Using gloves and eye protection is required. Protect the face of the compression seal using duct tape or another covering material. The epoxy will be applied to the compression seal and within the joint throat. This is a messy process, so it is critical that the area below the joint is clear and closed off to pedestrians and vehicles. I am demonstrating the application using a chip brush, but you can also apply the epoxy using a gloved hand. The application method can be chosen by your installation team. Your typical installation team for this product should include three installers. The typical scenario is, installer A and B will be working together to heat weld and install the compression seal, while installer C will continue mixing the epoxy for a continuous installation. You'll want to plan an achievable start and stop sequence prior to commencing work. Apply the epoxy liberally to maximize adhesion. It is also important to apply the epoxy within the crevices of the seal which act as a pooling surface that collects the epoxy while being pressed into the joint. The ribs on the side of the compression seal are patented joint master technology. This prevents the squeegee effect which is common to other seals in the field 
where epoxy is wiped off the smooth compression seal surface while being pressed into the joint. When beginning the installation, start at one end and begin pressing the seal into place. Install the compression seal to the depth called out in the installation instructions. This is very important for pedestrian safety and optimal performance during seismic movement. Reference shop drawings to confirm. There are a few different tricks to simplify the installation, one of which is utilizing a floor scraper which has had the blade removed. This method allows the installer to get more leverage while pressing the seal down. Remove the protective surface from your flooring and joint face. Using a paint thinner or xylene based product, wipe down the compression seal face to remove any epoxy residue. And that is the proper installation of a Jointmaster compression seal. For more information, visit improcorp.com backslash Jointmaster or contact your Jointmaster expert at 800-222-5556 today.